no. Not again. The car keys. Where are the car keys? Same problem every single day. Maybe they're in my pockets. No. Not there. Hey mum, have you seen my car keys? What? The car keys? Heavens above. No, I haven't. Seriously, Shane, you'd lose your head if it wasn't screwed down properly. There she blows. Must be time for a cup of tea. Now, cup. Where did I put my cup? Hmm. Uh, I think you get the idea. I need somewhere where I can hang my car keys and my favourite cup without ever misplacing them ever again. Which gives me a great idea for video two for the 30 minute challenge. Let's go. G'day folks, my name's Uncle Knackers and you're watching DIY for Knuckleheads. Now, on to today's 30 minute challenge. Now today's project is going to be very simple, which is right up my alley. All I have are four dodgy old fence palings. You could use pallet wood if you wanted to, but most people would just either throw their stuff out or even burn it. But I think for our coffee cup, car key, rack thingamajiggy, it should look really good. Fingers crossed. We'll have two pieces for the back and two for the side with a shelf and a top. And that's it. Now the first cuts are going to be these two backing boards and then the two side boards. The two backing boards, they'll be cut to a length of 570 millimeters, which is about 22 and a half inches. The two side pieces, they'll be cut to a length of 560 millimeters, which is a smidge over 22 inches. Smidge, how much do you think a smidge should be? Leave a comment below. I'm thinking about two millimeters, a bit under one eighth of an inch. Your thoughts? All right, it's time to get going. And I know that on that last challenge, we just snuck under that 30 minute mark by the skin of my teeth. Hopefully this time around, we can do a little bit better. You ready? Let's go. The backing boards are now cut to length, as are the two sides. And to finish it off, all you need to do is to cut a 45 degree angle on one end of both of those side pieces. Let's do that. Now with the angle cut on these two side pieces, Day. The next thing we need to do is to cut the top for the rack or the cabinet. Is it a rack or a cabinet? I'm not really sure just yet, but this top piece will extend past the outside edge on both sides by about an inch or 25 millimeters. And the total width of this top needs to be wide enough so that we have a little 10 millimeter or so ledge or edge just there, just to give the cabinet a bit of depth. All right, let's cut it. And with the top now cut, I think we're due for a time check. Okay, let's stop the clock. And it looks like we're on about eight minutes, which is pretty good. All right. Let's keep going. 
Now before we assemble everything, I want to give all these pieces a really good sand. Because once it's assembled, it's going to be quite difficult getting the sander inside to do a good job. Let's do that first and then we'll assemble everything. Okay, I've stopped the clock a fraction under 13 minutes. The sanding's all done. I just want to explain what I'm thinking about doing next. I'd like to apply a transfer to this backing board, but I don't think it's going to stand out much on this raw timber. So what I might do is give it a quick coat with a white paint, sand that back a little bit, and then with a bit of luck, that transfer will stand out more. Anyway, we'll give it a go and see how it turns out. And let's restart that clock. Because I'm doing a time challenge, I need to get this paint dried fast so I can give it a sand. All right, we'll test that out. And that's dry enough, we can now give it a sand. Beautiful. All right, that looks pretty good. It's now time for assembly and time for a time check. Okay, we'll stop the clock and we can see that we're approaching the 17 minute mark. Ooh, that's probably where we're supposed to be, but still only 13 minutes left. It's gonna be tight. Now, before I restart the clock, I just wanna explain what we're doing next. Now, because we're under a fair bit of a time constraint, we haven't got the luxury of doing any joinery to hold these two boards together. So all we're going to do is, I've found some old stuff just lying around the shed, a bit of brass, an old doorkeeper, and a rusty old leaf off a hinge. I'll screw these on, and that should hold everything in place. And in actual fact, I think that's going to look pretty good. So let's restart that clock and screw these things on. All right, let's just run some glue on this backing board and nail the thing together. It's pretty exciting. So I'll go like that, just spin this around, like that, and then this side, over here, and it goes on like that. Gee, the back's pretty gnarly, isn't it? Okay, get it flush on the edge, flush on the top. Just grab my trusty old nail gun and nail away. And there you have it. Now before I nail the top in place, I'd like to put in a shelf. So we'll do that, cut it, put it in, and then we'll nail the top off. Okay, stop the clock. And we are on What's that? Almost 25 minutes. <sighs> Why do I do this to myself? With about five minutes to go, I don't think I'm gonna have enough time. I'll just quickly run you through the last couple of jobs and we'll see how we go. Now, the last couple of jobs that I need to do are to put on the transfer and also to drill a couple of holes in the side here, run a stick through it to hang off my favorite cup and my car keys. Let's see how we go and restart that clock. Now from my printer, I've just printed off a copy of this coffee logo onto some label paper in reverse and hopefully this will now transfer onto this timber. Cross your fingers. It's really tricky and hard not to move it. At 
lay it out and try and rub all that print off like that and with a bit of luck this will transfer onto that painted surface all right I think that's enough let's take it off carefully oh, no good fail massive fail all right we're stopping the clock oh, okay we're looking at let's have a look almost 28 minutes so we've got two minutes to get those holes drilled and then work out what we're going to do with that transfer fail all right let's go can i do it let's go all right okay quick 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 where's my stick my stick there's my stick, put that in there, like that. Okay, now hooks, a couple of hooks. Uh, one there, uh, one there, and a cup. Where's my cup? My great tip, Knacker's cup. And these. Oh, come on! Okay. Okay. Let's stop the clock. All right, let's stop the clock. Ah. Oh. No, one second too late. Ugh. Oh, I cannot believe it. One solitary second. That was a fail. I didn't go under the 30 minutes. And I think the big drama was with that image transfer. It just didn't quite work out how I wanted it to. Oh, well, you live and learn, I suppose. Let's get back to it, see how it all turned out. And there's a couple of other cool things I want to show you. Let's go. All right, I know you don't have to gloat. The transfer was a bit of a fail, but I do have a backup plan that I hope is going to work. Mod Podge Image Transfer Solution to the rescue. Now the process is very easy. Like before, just get a reverse copy of the image that you want to transfer, especially if there's words. And there's actually videos all over YouTube on how to use this stuff. So I won't go into too much detail, but just basically cover that image with the Mod Podge. And if you want to buy some, I'll leave a link in the description box down below. So check that one out. Now just cover the whole image with the Mod Podge, nice and thick. Now the idea is to get all of that colour from that image covered with the Mod Podge. Once you do that, that looks pretty good. I'm going to take it over to my rack or my cabinet and place it face down and leave it for 24 hours. That looks pretty good. Okay, and now carefully place it carefully on my cabinet like that and just tap it down make sure you cover the whole image and kind of make sure you tap it and don't rub it because like over here the paper will start to pull up and tear so just be a bit gentle but go over the whole image all right that's pretty good now we'll leave that for 24 hours then come back and remove it now while we wait patiently for that transfer to dry I'll quickly show you how to easily make these really cool wire hooks for our coffee cups all you need for the job is a block of wood like I have here and a piece of dowel 
which you'll screw to that block of wood. And just in front of the dowel, you'll notice that I've driven in another screw. And now I'll show you how to use it. The first thing you need to do is to secure the block. And I'm just screwing mine down to my bench top. But you could also just put it in a vise. Both methods are good. And that is beautiful. To make the hooks, it's really simple to do. Just place your wire between the screw and that piece of dowel. Apply some pressure to that wire and bend it around the dowel, just like that. And you'll finish up with a really nice looking hook. And to get the opposite direction, just place it back into my wire bending contraption. Apply some more pressure, wrap it around the dowel, and bang. You are done, and you've finished up with a really nice looking hook. To complete the job, just grab a grinder, some tin snips or bolt cutters, snip off that excess, and you're done. Too easy. Okay, 24 hours has gone by, and now it's time to remove this paper to reveal the transfer. So just wet a sponge and go over the whole image. Just dab it and you can see those colours really starting to pop. Just keep dabbing it until all that image is wet and then just put a bit more water over the top and after this We'll come back in two minutes and rub that paper off. Okay, a couple of minutes have passed. Now let's just, in a circular motion, start rubbing this paper off. You can see there already how the transfer has gone down to the wood. Looks good. Just keep on going. Circular motion and all that paper's coming off. That's looking pretty nice. And there it is. What do you think of the Mod Podge image transfer method? I absolutely love it. And I would have done that in the first place if it wasn't for the 30 minute challenge. The 24 hour turnaround didn't really fit into that whole scheme. Anyway, enough of my excuses. Let's get this up on the wall. And there you have it folks, a very simple job to do and in just over 30 minutes. Great tip, knackers! Oh yeah, check this out. You can even make your own coasters out of an old fence paling. They come up pretty good. And also, check this out. It can also be used to hang your paintbrushes and it can even be a toilet roll holder. I absolutely love this thing and the possibilities are endless. And I'd just like to give a quick shout out to Donna from Funky Junk Interiors where I got the idea for the project. Check out her blog in the description box down below. It's good stuff. So that's it folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. A big thumbs up would be fantastic. And for more detailed photos, go to my Facebook page, link in the description box down below. Now, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button, hit my face about there for more project videos and 30 minute challenges. And for more rustic type projects, click that link over there. Alrighty, I'm done. I need a cup of tea and I know exactly where to find my cup. Too easy. So till next time, I'm out of here. Cheers.